You yep. should see our agenda in front of you. Um, I'm sure you've seen this before, so we'll go ahead and get started. 12 things to do to slow turnover. They just came back from um, two days of doing management training, and we, stopped, we talked a lot about treating employees, and we'll talk about some of those same things as we move along today. But, uh, you know, running a business, <clears throat> great piece of advice that I read a long time ago, running a business would be a piece of cake if it was not for people and money. And as a CEO said one time, but it's, and it's almost always a people problem because with the right people, you can do a lot of things without having a lot of money. But if you don't have the right people, you are just, you know, it's like having both your hands tied together trying to get anything done. So I would just, you don't have to do these things, they do say to do today, but just kind of maybe some of them roll them around in your head and ponder them. I worked for a very wise man at one time who taught me a lot of things, and one of the things he said to me that I, I probably didn't agree with him when he first said this to me, he said, you know, we were, re, we were rechanging, rechanging, we were changing everything in the company, you know, all the policies, procedures, benefits, um, payroll, it was a really fun job to, to have at the time, and he said, you know, when it comes to exempt people, we're just going to give them any time off they want. We're not going to have any vacation or sick or personal. They take time off as much as they want. I said, well, we, we got to, you know, got to say something, and he's like, nope. He said, if we have the right people, then they're going to get the same amount of work done and probably at a better quality than if we gave them a little time off or a whole lot of time off, it's just not going to matter. And think of yourself. If someone told you to just take what you need when you need it, you would be, since you're the right people, I'm assuming this, that you're the right people, that you would use that responsibly, that you wouldn't take advantage. And the very fact that someone would put that much trust in you would really make you want to um, do them right. And some companies today do that with everybody. Now, I don't know if they still do, but I remember reading about Netflix one time did it with everybody. You know, you just exempt, non-exempt, it didn't matter. If you needed the time, take it. And uh, that most people take it took about two, two weeks. It was just kind of a, it's almost like it's kind of ingrained in us. And, um, you know, so I, I always thought that would be interesting if over time, you know, because two weeks is kind of standard, if over time doing that, people would start to take more. And, you know, there's, and you think, oh, there's going to be somebody going to take advantage. Well, w you know, if they're taking advantage over their vacation, you know, there's other things they're taking advantage of. So that's like a sign. That's, I just as soon know about it, honestly. That's not the right people taking advantage of you and you know there might be times where people do need more time off because something's going on and that's not taking advantage that's just having the time available that you need so you know just pondering the idea that we have to say one to two years gets this many weeks two to five years gets this many weeks and so on and so forth give people control I don't my grandma worked for she ran the school cafeterias in Hardin County, Kentucky. And I always think Hardin County must be what Harlan County and Justified is based on. But it's, it's actually a very pretty place. And um, that was back when they cooked. I would talk about cooking. Oh my gosh. And my grandma, I can remember her talking about when she would get breasted frustrated when I forget what his name was, Mr. So-and-so, would not let her run her cafeteria the way that she knew it needed to be ran. And finally, she got him straightened out. <laughs> so I finally got Mr. So-and-so straightened out. He's letting me do what I need to do. <laughs> my guess is he's a smart man, and he let my grandma run that cafeteria. I don't care if you're running a cafeteria or you're just running a broom. People you want to give people control over something about their job so that they can have they they can have ownership they can feel pride in it um, I don't care what you do if you feel pride in what you do I admire you 
for doing that. And one of the easiest ways to do that is give people control over something instead of feeling that you're just being bossed around all day. Start making time to find out about employees as people. We were doing an exercise about motivation, and we'll kind of go through that same pyramid today. And, and they said, now, you know, put your employees down, some, you know, some of them, unless you got, you know, VPs and you got a whole bunch of them. And just start thinking, based on what we've talked about, what would really motivate that particular person? Because you should know. You should know right off the top of your head. Like one lady said that, um, the lady who worked for her was right next to her, and she said, um, I would give her time off to spend with her kids. And the lady, even though it was just training, and even though she wasn't going to get that time off, she was so touched, she almost cried because her manager knew her so well. And that's what she'd give her, and that's what she'd be happy to give her. Create trust. Trust is about 70 to 75 percent of engagement. Um, without trust, you can't have engaged employees. You can't have empowered employees. You can't have good relationships, period, without trust. Someone doesn't have to be a perfect person, but you have to, your employees have to trust that their manager is, you know, most of the time a pretty decent person. Because otherwise, you're going to have all kinds of fearful and shameful and dysfunctional behaviors occurring. And when a manager trusts their employees, they, they empower them. They give them control. They might say, well, you can do this, this, and this if a customer has such and such a problem, or you can spend this amount of money without calling me, or, or anything that it is, you trust them. I'm going to teach you how to do this. Um, you know, the employee will say, oh, I don't think I can do that. Yes, you can. I learned how to do it. You can learn how to do it. They trust. And when your boss trusts you, then that creates what, you know, that warm, tingly feeling inside you. Hatchet the politics. Break up the cliques, the cults, and the crazy behavior. What usually happens is you get one disenfranchised or dysfunctional individual and the whole department, team, project, group, whatever it is, all end up having to work around that one or two people or those crazy politics. You know, I, I, I use you know the the what I like to call the Luddites as a as a the technological you can you can go to Wikipedia and read about the Luddites it's this kind of 18th century um, weavers who didn't like weaving machines they didn't like technology this is kind of an interesting thing to read and technologies like that today you can't run you know it takes three times or four times as hard to run a project because you've got one person that doesn't want to use just some simple technology tool like Trello or Flow or and so you're having to have in-person meetings where you don't really need to have them just because of this one person I remember working somewhere one time and we couldn't use the Outlook meeting or shared calendar functions because they like to use a desk calendar. So it was like you had to work like it was 1982 all the time. <laughs> you do more these days. You're expected to do more these days. You know, they expect more and more and more. Well, yeah, the idea is that technology is going to help you. But if you're not using that technology, everything just gets harder and harder and harder. And so you might have that one person who... I also remember another person who in, was in charge of financial information, but they were they were really a left behind with technology. So whenever they would give you numbers, it was an absolute fight to get those numbers because obviously they were an information hoarder, right? Because that's a form of power, and so you would have to fight to get those numbers, and then you'd finally get those numbers at the very last minute. You needed them for a presentation in the morning, and you'd get them at 5 o'clock the night before, and you know what they would be? They'd be in a printed report. They couldn't be in Excel or anything where you could actually take that and use it. It'd be in a printed report, so you would have to retype everything into Excel. That's what I call crazy behavior, and we tend to run our businesses around that crazy behavior. I don't care how much you know or how smart you are. You can't, you know, bring everybody down to that level all the time. Consistency. 
it terrorizes employees to have inconsistent managers. You know, they um, some that also when I was doing the training, we were talking about you know managers we've had in the past who were inconsistent like that. You know, friendly one day, nasty the next. You never knew who was coming in the very next day. And then somebody else said, well, I had a manager who would panic one day about one thing and then panic the next day about something else. You never knew what they were going to panic about on any given day. And then she would turn around and accuse you, you know, you're not on the same page. I don't think you care about what you're doing. They just didn't know what to panic about that particular day. And they were still hurt like many years later because that's basically saying to somebody that cares about their job that you know I don't, I don't trust you you don't care about what you're doing and when you do care about what you're doing that's almost the worst thing anybody can say to you you'd probably rather fail at something than somebody tell you you don't care about what you're doing or you're not on the same page when you do when you reward people, you know, the idea of catching people doing things right, sometimes yeah, there's a lot of really good people that have to teach themselves to do this because they didn't grow up with somebody who would catch them doing things right. Or maybe they never had a supervisor. And instead of being, you know, you can either do one of two things. You can either end up being like that person or you can use them as a, I'm not going to be like that person excuse me, that person. And so this does not mean that you run around all the time giving everybody a trophy and telling them they're the best thing since sliced bread. But if you see somebody stay really late the night, you know, then say, well, hey, you got a soccer game this afternoon. You stayed late last night. If you want to, you can take off half an hour early so you can, um, you know, get to you know your soccer coach you can get to your kids soccer game if you want to or you can you know get the overtime from it or if they're exempt you know I remember having a boss one time who came in and said you worked late last night you were out at a dinner it's a beautiful day take the rest of the afternoon off and go horseback riding oh <laughs> not only did somebody notice and you know, was appreciative, they gave a reward, but timing is everything. You don't say thanks two weeks later. And so you catch people doing something right and, you know, you, you appreciate that and, you know, maybe maybe somebody who, maybe you've got a budget. Some people have a budget for little, I call them little gifties, like gas cards and things, and you can pass out money, and maybe somebody does something amazing and saves a big customer or something, and, you know, they're an entry-level employee, and you say, hey, I know you're going out of town to a soccer game again this weekend. Here's a $25 gas card out of the out of the um, gifty closet because I, I, you, you, you kept our biggest customer, you know, when you said such and such to them that it, it really calmed them down. I think it just, you know, really um, appreciate it, saved it, appreciate it. And so, um, you know, spot celebrations, spot rewards, catching people things, doing things right, timing is everything. But if you, you know, didn't grow up you might be a really nice person, but it feels weird to express appreciation. But you know, the more you do it, the better it feels. And you see how much people really like it when you compliment them. Even if it's something where you walk up to them and you say, you're really, you're really smart, you know this system inside and out, you'll know what to do. That's a compliment to somebody. Or if you say, I heard the nicest thing about you the other day. Or a customer complimented you the other day. All of those things are celebration. Here's a bagel. You know, I was at the bagel shop this morning and I remembered that you really liked these bagels and you've been trying really hard to learn those books lately or get on board learning that project tool, so I brought you a bagel. And so any anything where you show appreciation, give a reward, a little reward, or just say something nice, timing is everything. They asked the teacher of the year one time, what do you do differently than the other teachers? And he said, all I try to do is find, say something nice to each kid every day. Notice he didn't say, you know, a trophy or anything. It's, uh, it's you know, hey, office supplies are on shutdown because of the budget, and I know you like yellow yellow highlighters and this is the last one in the supply closet so I grabbed it for you. Just little nice things 
like that that we do for people, you might have to teach yourself to do that. 